Hello. Yeah. I'm here for the game. Blind date. All right. What is happening? This is Blind Date with Chuck Bass. It is Monday. We got three days to the draft. Today's show is supported by Mountain Dew Major Melon. If you love melons, uh, this is the drink for you. That's probably not going to sound like I mean it to, but uh, they don't pay me. This is all free. So whatever, I can say whatever the hell I want. Uh, speaking of saying whatever the hell we want, today's guest is about to absolutely crush it. Please, please welcome on the fantastic, the wonderful, the knowledgeable Jake Perry. What's happening, dude? Hey, how's it going? How we doing? Living the dream. It's oh, that time yeah. of year, you know? We're just, we're, we're just all ready for it. We are inches away. Everybody out there knows what it is that you're referring to. Everybody's hot and bothered. We're about to take off. Let's do it. Yeah. How are you been, man? Things good on your end? Oh, yeah. Just uh, life's been stressful. Just bought one car. Mm -hmm. Got to go buy another car. Mm -hmm. You know, had to replace oh, the yeah. furnace and the AC in the house. It's that mm -hmm. time of the year, you know. <laughs> you know what? People love doing both of those things. Yeah, it's just they love we love spending money in this economy. It's great. That's it. I, you know what? You just you just got to do it. It's the only way for us to bounce back is for us to empty our savings into cars and furnaces and just whatever we can. Things that make us happy and that we wake up appreciative of. Exactly. And I'd rather do this than overpay for fantasy assets. So mm, it's still mm, a win in go. my book. There you go. That is cost benefit analysis paying for fan well you know what uh, a bunch of teams are about to overpay for some assets in just a couple of days here i'm really curious to see how things shake out but we'll get into that we'll get into some good stuff we've got some awesome questions going so we'll start off right now we'll hit the rehearsal dinner questions just five quick little warm-ups and uh then we'll take this blind date to new heights that sound good let's do it awesome all right number one i started to ask this question to everybody because it's become a personal favorite kornheiser or wilbon Ooh. I got to go Wilbon. I prefer him a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah. I it's like happening. it. The Wilbon bounce back is happening. I, um, uh, I've i asked this question a lot now, and I didn't get any Kornheisers up until my last podcast when Frank Amarante said Wilbon, and now I've got back-to-back -back two Wilbons in the house. So the tide's changing. He's gonna, he, I love it. I love it. I'm going to do whatever I can to reach out to him and let him know that. All right. Current favorite television show? Ooh. Um. My wife and I have been binging Love is Blind recently, so wow. i got to go with that. Is that your kind of show, or are you just, just this one in particular? Just this one. I don't think I've watched a dating show since I was like 13 <laughs> watching Rock of Love on MTV or Rock Rock one, whatever Love. it was on. Like, that was probably yes. the last dating show I watched, and then like one season of The Bachelor because my girlfriend at the time wanted to watch it, mm. and that's it. So this was my wife just started watching it, and... I don't know how it happened, but here we are. I've got favorites. If anybody wants to talk about it, just let me know. I've got hot takes. I've got cold takes. Please. I'm ready. Is there fantasy love is blind? I, I If there isn't, I'm going to start one. There we go. This is a money-making opportunity, I think. Um, God, that's that's the show that like the servers went down, right? Or something like that? Yep. They crashed Netflix for a minute. <laughs> yep. That's amazing. Oh, my God. Were you there? Were you like ready and the shit just went nuts? Or No, we were. I don't remember what we were doing that night, but we were like, we weren't playing. We weren't caught up at that point. So we were yeah. still like on season three. That was season four. So we still had, we had to get through season four anyway. So nice. we finally watched it like two nights ago. So we're completely okay. caught up at this point. Good. All right. Well, that's what I like to hear. Um, that makes buying a car a little bit easier when you know you've got some people on reality TV shows that can balance you out a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. All right. What's the worst concert you've ever seen? Uh, we saw Toby Keith at uh, Country there. Thunder one year, and he was so mm -hmm. drunk that he fucked up the words to Red Solo <laughs> Cup. So that ruined the whole show for all of us. A, a country artist got so drunk is already not what I expected to hear because that's typically – they typically are able to candle immense amounts of alcohol and to fuck up their own song. Yeah. It, oh, and, God. like, the one song that everybody there really wants yeah. to hear, mm -hmm. like – you just had to get through that one, and then you could have you could have messed up any other song. We wouldn't have cared, mm -hmm. but you messed up Red Solo Cup a bunch of a, around a bunch of drunk idiots drinking out of Red Solo cups. You're really you're you're uh, killing your audience there. When was that? I was like 2017, 2018. Oh man, I still feel the passion all these years later. You still yeah. seem you still seem upset. <laughs> I'll never get over it. It 
It took me, I sobered up. Like, that's how bad it was. I was like, mm-hmm. I'm sober now. I'm going home. And then you're sober at a country concert. That's, yeah, that's, 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 that's tough all the way around. And I love Kobe Keith too. So that's pretty brutal. Exactly. Um, but not surprising. All right. Number four, can you fight? I like to think I can. Nice. Have you been in a fight? Couple. Nice. Here and there. A okay. lot of a lot of almost fights. A lot of like, mm. I'll knock Step you out, up. and then I'm Step like, up. okay, yeah. let's do it, and then they don't. So, <laughs> that sounds uh, but yeah, I got in one fight um, like ten years ago visiting my buddy at his college. Yeah. Um, uh, there was just a guy being creepy, which is what mm. most of them end up being like guys being yeah. way too creepy or handsy, and that mm-hmm. ends up in a fight. Uh, yeah. And then I got one in one when I was like. 13 with an 11 mm-hmm. year old mm. he hit me over the head with some ice he was on top of me and i like slapped him and that was the whole fight but he cried to his mom after that so that counts that counts that goes in the record books as, a, as, an, ofic- as an official win yeah, it was a stoppage win i my, <laughs> my mma record one and oh stoppage win where did you say you hit him i literally like slapped him here like, okay nice yeah that's all it takes to knock an 11 year old pretty much yeah. that'll, that'll do it all right, those are great answers. All right, number five, what is true love? True love is being with somebody uh, or finding something and you want to change nothing about it. And mm. it just, its existence makes your life better. Mm. So it's like Kirk Cousins. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, nice. Kirk I Cousins like is right up there. You know, Cooper Cup yes. makes, makes life easier. Mm. Even with, even through the ups and downs, Christian McCaffrey. Sign yes. me up. Yes. Never wanted him to change. That's nobody. We never wanted that. Um, wow. That was, I don't know where to go from here. That answer was so good. You just fired that right off the hip too. It's what I'm here for. I'm here nice. to please. Nice. Well, that means that we're in a good place. This relationship is solid and stable. We're going to take this blind date uh, for a test drive. You ready to rock? I am ready. All right, let's do it. Number one, what's your deal? I mean, de- <laughs> depends on uh, depends on what you mean. Hit the people who are who may or may not be familiar with your work with uh, the full Jake package. Yep. So my name is Jake. I've been doing fantasy football content for about three years now. Uh, I'm over with the JWB fantasy football team. Um, so all of my fantasy content is through them. And then I have a personal podcast with my best friend Kyle. It's called Two Average Husbands, where we. Mm-hmm bring four random topics to each other each week. We don't tell the other person what they are and we drink two beers in an hour. Um, and they're typically not like light beers or anything like that. So it's a couple 8% beers in an hour. The last couple topics get a little weird, but we have a good time. Um, and I'm always here to talk fantasy. If you want to talk mm-hmm. about golf, video games, baseball, football, I got you. I'm ready to go. Hell yeah. People don't realize, or at least most people don't, that it's beer is not always a volume game. It's yeah. a percentage. It can be a percentage game if you want to play it right. It very much, if you want to, if you're a volume guy, if you Mm -hmm. are a a looking at target share, if you want 300 carries a year, Mm -hmm. you know, stick to your natty lights, your bud lights, your cores lights, this fridge right here is all craft beer. So don't get me wrong. I'm a volume guy too, but sometimes Mm -hmm. you need a little efficiency. You grab one of these bad boys right here, about 11 and a half percent stout. One of those and you're like, okay, I'm golden. Golden. Yeah. I mean, you you can be a volume guy, but it's like, you know, you, enough 300 carry seasons in a row and you start to break down. So exactly. you have to mix in some efficiency in there somehow. You have to. All right. Very nice. All right. That paints a nice little picture for the rest of this. So let's get into some good, some good shit right here. All right. Let's do it. Number two, what is a common NFL draft take floating around right now that you think people should be embarrassed to have? I think you should be embarrassed if you think that Hendon Hooker is a first round draft prospect mm, swinging for the fences right off the bat. I like yeah. it. So I why mean, is that? Uh, he's 25 years old. He's yeah. coming off of a torn ACL. Mm-hmm. Uh, his entire motto on a football field is the first guy's not open. I'm going to run now. Mm-hmm. And he wasn't good at football until he was 24. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, the NFL was like, eh, maybe you should try again. Yeah. So sure. I get that Will Levis isn't great. We want to rank somebody over Will Levis. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Hen and Hooker ain't it, guys. Yeah, and that's that started to. He's more of like an inspirational story, and I think people like to pump those up. You yeah, know, like, was Johnny Manziel inspirational? No, but uh, people loved the story, and that was all he people needed to, you know, get his draft ranking up a little bit. Yeah, you hate to see. It's not like, you know, the old quarterback thing. We have too many examples of it going poorly. I don't know yeah. what more people need to see, but look, I mean, like nobody's rooting against him. But exactly. if you're just looking, if you're just looking at it from. Uh, 
purely, you know, draft draft prospect. What can this guy be? It's red flag, more red flags than people are willing to admit. Yeah. I think that's what a lot of people get mixed up when we like dog on players that are coming out or anything mm-hmm. like that. I don't want these guys to fail. If Hendon Hooker proves mm-hmm. me wrong, he comes out, he's the best quarterback in NFL history. I'm going to be yeah. ecstatic that I was wrong, yeah. but I'm people come to me for advice mm-hmm. about these players. And sure. I have to just be realistic about what this guy can be on an NFL field. And mm-hmm. sometimes that comes off a little bit more harsh than it uh, intends to like uh, my perpetual seemingly hatred for Kenny Pickett does. Uh, <laughs> but you know, you just got to be realistic sometimes. Of course. And you mentioned, and not to let this get buried in the weeds there is that you mentioned just not a first round pick and maybe, maybe not even a high second round pick, but you know, if somebody wants to take, a chance on what he might be able to do as like a Geno Smith esque type. I don't know. I mean, there's, there's potential for all these guys just to varying degrees. Yeah. Everybody's got a cost. Everybody, yeah. no matter what the player is, no matter who they are, no matter what their background is at a certain mm-hmm. cost, I'll try it. Sure. Um, and it, you know, the, if the cost is too high, I'm going to tell you it's too high. I'm just mm-hmm. going to be honest about it. And first round too high. I probably wouldn't even use a second on him. third mm-hmm. at that point you're throwing darts anyway. So yeah, who cares? I gotcha. Very nice. Okay. This next question we've uh, we already talked about slightly, but I'd love to build a little bit more detail of it. Buying a new car, overrated, underrated, or properly rated? I'm going to say properly rated mm-hmm. just because I think people underrate it too much. So sure. I think it balances out. It's really not that bad of an experience, especially now. I know like right now, like interest rates are high and everything like that. Mm-hmm. If you have a good bank, a good credit union, you can get approved through them. I walked into the dealership with approval gave them, you know, mm-hmm. gave them the approval that I had. I, an hour later, I walked out with a car. It was, you a very, uh, you have any like sort of game plan? Do you have any questions you like to ask or information you don't like to give? I know some people go in with an attack strategy. Some go in just improv. Yeah. I refuse to tell you what I want to pay. Um, mm. You're going to show me a number. And if I like it, I like it. If I don't, yeah. I don't, I'm not afraid to shop around because mm. it doesn't matter. Your credit can be run by 30 banks in, in one day and it yeah. does it's not going to hit it anymore. The, the loan is really what knocks your credit down. So don't be afraid to shop around for your interest rates. The dealer was like, I think we can beat it. And then he talked to his finance guy and he was like, I don't think we can beat that. And so we didn't waste our time. And mm. um, because I didn't say I was at a specific number, I ended up getting a number that I really liked with yeah. all the warranties and all the bells and whistles thrown in on it mm. too. So, you know, if you're just, if you go in there with an open mind, go in there with an idea of what you want, but mm-hmm. just don't overly you know express it also don't deal detail your car if you're going to trade it in because mm-hmm. they will give you less for it because they think you're desperate like to get rid of it and you yeah. want to make it look nice sure do you, heated seats have to gas yeah, yeah. heated seats heated steering wheel living in illinois it's an absolute must for me remote start was a, a nice absolute must as well Clutch. Um, and then the only other absolute must i had was blind spot monitors because my old car didn't have them but my wife's mm-hmm. does yeah. um and so driving with those had to have. Yeah. I, uh, I bought, I have a Volvo that I bought in Florida and I was in Florida. I didn't need heated seats. They knocked like $2,500 off. And within the year I moved to Kentucky. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sitting on like Amazon heat seater or seat heaters in my car right now. Hey. It's, it's painful. Get them. Yeah. Even if you don't need them, get them. Even if you don't need them. Helps the resale value too. Got to yeah, think about that. Time. Yeah. Got to be looking at it good. So, you know, we lesson lessons made. We've all made bad draft picks. So that was mine. 100%. <laughs> nice. All right. Number four, give me three things about this draft coming up in just a couple of days that you think people should be keeping their eye on. I think people should be keeping their eye on the tight ends of the draft mm-hmm. um, because people are going to overdraft the tight ends because they're going to go, there's going to be two or three tight ends that go in the first round handful more that go in the second and people are going to overdraft those in rookie drafts take advantage of those late guys that are super athletic though you know ras the relative athletic score has one of the highest correlations to fantasy success um, amongst tight ends it's not like an end-all be-all but if you break down like the top tight end seasons of all time they're pretty much all elite athletes so Mm. those guys are going to fall down getting them in the third and fourth round is great getting some of those undrafted guys and just stashing a couple on your taxi squad Mm -hmm. you know i really like that idea um i think the running backs in this class are going to be a little overvalued right now and then i think they're going to be undervalued post-draft people are going to not love landing spots even though they were super high on these guys because there's there's so many talented backs and you know Mm -hmm. if somebody gets drafted to washington you know that people are going to be like oh they're just going to let brian robinson be the guy brian robinson's not 
that great of a running back. So if a uh, Ty J Spears goes there, mm-hmm. he can be, he can beat out Brian Robinson. Like sure. he's just a better running back all around. So mm-hmm. I think, you know, if you do your rookie drafts, uh, before the uh, NFL draft happens this week, just be willing to fade the running backs a little bit and then take yeah. advantage of the value you're going to get next week. Mm-hmm. And then I, I don't think four quarterbacks are going to go in the first round. Like everybody does. Yeah. That I don't started know. to cool off a lot. That narrative has cooled off a pretty decent amount over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. I have no idea who um, is going to fall, but mm-hmm. one of them is going to fall out of the top 10. Yeah. We, I mean, we saw it uh, two years ago. Nobody thought Justin Fields was going to be, you know, outside yeah. of the top 10. People thought Mac Jones could have been taken third overall by the 49ers. You know, somebody's going to fall, especially out of the top 10, yeah. but I wouldn't be shocked to see somebody fall out of the first round entirely. It happens regularly. I mean, the slide, and it becomes a huge conversation night of. It's crazy how short-term memory people have that this happens every year, that yep. somebody slides and it becomes a snowball effect of how far is he going to slide? How far is he going to slide? I really liked what you mentioned about the skill position. I liked everything, but the skill position players got me. So do you think that this draft in particular has potentially been harder for people for to project where skill position players are going to go? Or do you think that just so much is on the table that it makes it more you know, difficult? I think so much is on the table that it becomes a little bit more difficult just because Mm -hmm. the, all of the wide receivers really, not all of them, but a good Mm -hmm. chunk of them fit kind of the same mold. You know, we have a lot of slot receivers. Um, we have a lot of the outside guys that we do have their games lacking in some way, shape or form, Mm -hmm. uh, with the running backs, a lot of undersized guys, but guys who have been productive can Mm -hmm. be pass catchers, cannot be pass catchers. There's just so much that it's really going to boil down to what it kind of boils down to every year. We need to just look at what the draft capital ends up being and make a decision from there. I don't care if, if, you know, Charbonnet is my favorite running back in the class. If he goes in the fifth round, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta fade that a little bit. Um, so I, you know, just, I always tell people to be super fluid around draft time. Like mm-hmm. I, I put out my rankings a couple of weeks ago of all the rookies, you know, all the ones at least that I expect to be fantasy relevant. Mm-hmm. If somebody gets taken three rounds later, then, I, I want them to, I have yeah. no problem dropping them down in my rankings. You just mm-hmm. have to, there's, there's so much that's going to change draft night, sure. you know, especially it could be the day before the draft. A guy could be walking down the stairs, tear his ACL. And now he's yeah. not going to get drafted where we thought he was going to be. So, mm. yeah. So fluidity, you're looking for fluidity and understanding what the teams are looking. Yeah. Yeah. I like that a whole lot. Excellent. All right. Number five, what is your favorite exercise or workout? Recently it's been just low bar squats you know, Oh, nice. Um, Underrated. Underrated. I've been on a big leg day kick recently. I don't know what it is. I like didn't work, like didn't really do legs. Like I did them because Mm -hmm. they were in my programming for forever. Um, but like recently I've really been diving into leg day a little bit heavier, a little bit more Mm -hmm. intense. And so just standard low bar squats are are the go-to for me right now. I think leg day for whatever reason, I find the workout itself to be the most enjoyable. Um, Yep. I, I, I don't know why that is. And it's you know different for everybody. I had just, maybe it just feels like such a breath of fresh air when it does come around. I just kind of enjoy how far you're able to push yourselves on them. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's the easiest workouts to go heavy on too. And yeah. <laughs> depending on like how used to it, you are like, I can't bench 300 pounds, but I can deadlift and squat 300 pounds for reps. Like it's, yeah. you know, it's, no, I know what you mean. It makes me feel a little tougher. Exactly. <laughs> like it's nice little... to load up the bar for a day and just <laughs> yeah. get to feel stronger than you probably are. Yeah. Whenever it takes me two full minutes to load the rack, I'm feeling pretty, uh, exactly. feeling pretty, pretty good about myself. You just go to the gym. Uh, I, I mostly just work out at home, honestly, nice. just to the left of me here. I've got mm-hmm. a little, I've got a squat rack, uh, dumbbell, barbell. Yeah. I've got plates, uh, trap bar for deadlifting when mm-hmm. I don't feel like taking the bar off the squat rack. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've got a little bit of everything over here, but I probably should actually go to the gym a little bit more if I'm being honest, um, mm-hmm. just to change up the exercise a little bit, make it a little more fun. I know what you mean. It's kind of like my mental get out of the house. Cause I work from home pretty regularly. So Same. I like to get, get out and just go and. Um, I don't know, just lounge and take my time. I'm trying to get better at how, this is a question. I I don't know why I've never asked anybody this, but I should, especially somebody who works out. How often are you rigid about how much time you do between sets? I'm not. Um, yeah. I used to be, I used to follow like the old school bodybuilder mentality mm-hmm. of like a minute and a half, two minutes between yeah. sets. But 
a lot of the the people that are smarter than I am have basically mm -hmm. said like, take as much time as you need because yeah. you're going to get more out of the set. If you take your time, fully recover from that yeah. set and then go to failure again or, or close yeah, to yeah. failure, you can get more out of that. So, yeah. um, and like you kind of said, you know, it's kind of an escape for me. It's kind of way to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just not focus on the other stuff that's going on in the day. Yeah. So I don't, I don't mind it if my workout takes an hour and a half, two hours, I don't need yeah. to, um, but I don't know what it does. I know what you mean. It's just a very Zen like state when you're kind of just going at it, you're you know, pushing yourself, but going at a pace that feels, um, yeah. appropriate. Exactly. Yeah. I don't need to feel like I'm dying the entire time. Like I'm not, <laughs> I may work out for two hours and barely break a sweat, but I, yeah. I can do a really, really hard workout that during that entire time, just because yeah. I'm resting. You're maximizing it. I got you. All right. Number six, what number will be more staggering come August? Amon Ra St. Brown's ADP or Jameson Williams gambling debt? I think it has to be the gambling debt. If we, <laughs> like, if we think about it, Amon Ra's ADP, he's in the top 36 <laughs> picks more than likely. <laughs> I, I well, for sure. am, I am point, currently yeah. in more gambling debt than $36. <laughs> so I can only imagine what a millionaire is doing. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you mean. It's, um, I just, I, I'm curious if, Amon Ra's St. Brown's ADP can peak in any specific way after this news, or if there, if anything with the draft is going to change it in any way, I don't know. I mean, I've seen trade for DeAndre Hopkins rumblings. Mm -hmm. I've seen spend that high pick on JSN rumblings. Um, I'd just be really curious where that all goes, but I mean, to be suspended for gambling, uh, you got to have a little something going on there. Yeah. It's a little bit of a tough scene. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm of the opinion that trading their second round pick for, for D hop would be a, mm -hmm. a true sign that they're trying to go all in, in a very yeah. winnable division. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think they go JSN personally. Sure. Um, it, he, he is Amon Ross St. Brown. Like they're yeah, the same they're just guy. Doubling. Yeah. Yeah. They just be mirroring both sides of the field basically. Yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. I am interested to see how it goes. Um, mm -hmm. I like even at a, a raised cost, which I've seen so far, just on underdog from Amon Ra, mm -hmm. I still like him at cost. You know, you're sure. getting a ton of volume there. He's efficient. I'm not, yeah. I, but I, I do want to see how high it can go. Like, I want to yeah. see if he'll, he ends up a first round pick in one quarter. Mm -hmm. of the yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm just trying to think if this news is going, I'm just, I was trying to think about who he would jump. Um, Cause there's some guys that are just going to be stabilized and their ADP is not going to fall unless some injury happens or something you know, some draft, I don't know. It's just tough. I was looking at it recently. I mean, the top guys in the wide receiver market are firmly, firmly established. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see where things go, but you know how it goes every draft season. People just hype up. There's a lot of lions love. People want them to succeed. Yep. They love the offense. They're all, we're all rooting for Dan Campbell. So we'll see, but it will be, you know, it'll be hard. My hot take is that he'll jump Jalen Waddle. Ooh, that would be feisty. And you know what? That's probably the line for me. I would love both of those guys roughly equally. I'd probably love yeah. Waddle more, but I get it. I think yeah. I probably that probably makes sense from a I have them six and seven in my rankings and they've flipped back and forth quite a few times. So mm -hmm. I mean the argument for and against Waddle both makes a lot of sense. I mean, well, the argument for is complete like common sense. You don't even have to think about it. Yeah. The argument against it's like, okay, I get I get that too. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Cool. All right, number four, what are we at? Number seven. Have you ever protested anything? Um, like in person, not really. Okay, yeah, let's we'll go with that. Picketing. Have you ever picketed? Yeah, can't say that I have. <laughs> um, because well, you're not a pick. You're not because you're not a picket guy. Yeah, I'm not a picket guy. <laughs> um, nice. I I don't have a picket fence either. So, mm -hmm. oh, so you're across that. the board, no picketing. Yeah, no picket guy. Mm -hmm. I support you if you do, but uh, I can't say mm -hmm. that I ever have. Yeah. You have any? Uh, do you like is would you ever want to any kind of bucket list kind of thing? Um, I feel like if they uh, ever wanted to destroy Wrigley field in Chicago, That's, I was I just going to say, it has to be like, they're going to tear down something that we all love. Yeah. It's, it's, it's gonna gonna be the move. If you're tearing down Wrigley field, if you're tearing down Fenway, I'm not even a Red Sox fan, but I'll go there for that. Mm -hmm. Like if you're going to tear something like that down, I'm protesting. Sure. What about Mount Rushmore? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let him do it I, that's that's a little bit of a farther travel for me yeah i know that's just for whatever reason it's the first thing that came to my mind the logistics i feel like there's gonna be so many people like will anybody notice if i'm even there sure yeah they'll, they'll handle it the kids will handle it this even, next if generation. I, even if i was there they're not gonna think that i was there anyway yeah. so it's gotta it's be on the cancel list i'm sure i'm sure they've got it up coming up at one, the agenda of one of their meetings wouldn't shock me 
No, it wouldn't. It's pretty easy target. All right, number eight. So the S2 test is making some waves right now, uh, mostly horrible. If we were to apply a similar test to fantasy analysts, what sort of metrics do you think we would measure? I think we would measure probably basic math skills. Okay. Um, if, as long as you can <laughs> do the basic math of how to figure out, even just like figuring out how many PPR points somebody scores like that. Yeah. We got to test that out for people. Sure. Um, we got to test out. We still got to test out reaction time. I need to know how fast mm -hmm. you can make your draft picks. So I need, yeah. I need that click to go through. Um, mm -hmm. And then overall uh, engagement speed, how fast can you reply to the tweets that you get ah, nice. when you anger the uh, anger, the Twitter mob of Kenny Pickett fans? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. <laughs> so how, how reactive are you? Okay. So exactly. you're talking about putting people through real, uh, putting them in real mental situations and having them perform. They're going through the gauntlet. Mm -hmm. so and it's we, not, yeah. not the, not the gauntlet at the combine. I mm -hmm. don't imagine a lot of us would be great at that, but yeah. mental gauntlet it's going mm -hmm. down. Yeah. That's um, I'd always wondered if we were going to come up with some sort of established baseline for what it, what it requires, but also that's kind of the beauty is that we don't have one and we get to let, we get to let the, um, I don't know, the garden bloom in so many different ways. Exactly. Some, yeah. something always comes out of nothing. So mm -hmm. even the, the best analyst in the world started as a, an idiot with a Twitter account. Mm -hmm. That's what we all started as. So <laughs> here we are. I started it as an idiot without one. So if that's, that's there any you go. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, this, this next section is what I like to call the memory lane segment. So I'll type in a keyword into your Twitter and see what comes up. So I typed in shit and we found a tweet from you did have a lot, but I loved it because I have a lot too. Uh, so we found a tweet on uh, February 15th, 2023. And I just want to see if you stand by it. Uh, this tweet will serve a very niche population, but my new keyboard came today and holy shit, I'm obsessed. Yep. You stand with it? Still stands with it. It's right here. I'll unplug mm -hmm. it and show it to the... Uh, Please, let's get a so, little home shopping network going. Ooh. So, yeah. What is going on with that? It's a, it's a mechanical keyboard. I don't remember mm -hmm. what switches that I have. Uh, the keycaps came with it, but the whole thing mm -hmm. all in was like 65 bucks. Mm -hmm. I like the sound of it. It's not as annoying as some of mine have been, but I'm a keyboard mm -hmm. guy, so I've had like 30. Nice. So what, you just run through them or they just don't stand up to your, uh, they don't measure up to your standards. I get bored and then I'm just like, I just want something new. It's, it's kind of been a problem for my wallet most of my life. I just get bored of stuff and want a new one. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I just, I was watching YouTube one day. Mm -hmm. uh, I got some, I was just like on autoplay and this, this yeah. keyboard popped up in, in a, a review of it. And I was like, that looks cool. I'll take, I'll get it. And then so here we are. Nice. Well, there you go. That's all. It's the things like that that make you happy in life. You know, exactly. I've never, I've never met a keyboard guy. And if I have, it's usually like a piano guy. So this is the yeah. first analog keyboard guy that I met. I like it. I'm happy to be your first. Oh, please. Well, we're on a blind date. I mean, exactly. I, would ex I would expect nothing less. Um, I, I haven't had anybody take me that far on one of these yet, but uh, you are drinking starry. So there's a lot of promise there. You got to do what you got to do. Do you like it? I do. I, I like it. I didn't like Sierra Mist. So Smart. I prefer this to yeah. Sierra Mist. Good. That's what they were. They were hoping it, they were marketing it as the Sprite killer, right. uh, which is what I mean. I mean, to be honest, that's exactly what they said about Sierra Mist, but it never took hold. Yeah. Sierra Mist. Uh, I wouldn't call this a Sprite killer. I'd say this is actually tastes closer to like Mountain Dew does for me. Yeah. Which is what they should have done. I mean, why compete with, why get into that market in particular when you can yeah. bridge people over? So exactly. Nice. All right, number nine, or I think number 10 or whatever hell number we're on. We'll see here. We had a very fine rookie running back class last year, but statistically speaking, a few of them will break our hearts in this upcoming yep. year. Do you do any of them stand out in particular to you in this regard? Um, are you talking about this year's class or last year's class? Um, last year's rookie class of so this year's sophomores. Gotcha. Um mm -hmm. Uh, Rashad white hurt me personally. Mm. Um, not that he was bad, but I had him at yeah. running back two over Kenneth Walker. Sure. That take didn't look so great at the end of everything. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, Brian Robinson was never going to be that great, but I mean, mm -hmm. getting shot didn't exactly help him. <laughs> uh, so he was definitely disappointing, I think for a lot of people. And then mm. I'm personally just disappointed that I didn't have more Tyler Algier. Mm. So. You know, that was, I mean, that was one where it was like, you know, there, I did not believe there were some Tyler Agio guys, but there were not 
I just I haven't seen as many of them as I've seen with a lot of different running backs for this class coming up. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, it yeah. feels like it it feels like last year, like the biggest Tyler Algier fans that I knew, their first names were Tyler. So they just mm -hmm. had a connection piece there. Sure. Uh, but yeah, this year it's like everybody's got a guy. I've got mm -hmm. a guy. I'm sure you've got a guy. My cousin Vinny's got a guy. <laughs> yeah, they have all got one. There's a lot of diversity this year. Um 100%. Yeah. yeah. Um there's, I feel like there's a lot of those guys from last year. And I mean, look, some of them are going to be bona fide going into the upcoming year, your ETNs, your Kenneth Walkers and everything. But, you know, like you said, Al Algiers, potentially Rashad White, Damian Pierce. I mean, I'm just Pache Pachenko. There's a lot of guys that I think, you know, people are going to be comfortable with going into week one as their starter. And I mean, I'm not saying they're not going to have a good season, but they're on that um, fine line where I could see teams having other plans for them. Yeah, I could see a lot of the guys from last year getting replaced in this year's class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, easily. Yeah, cool. All right, number 11. The late great Queen Elizabeth once was quoted as saying, wins are a quarterback stat. Do you agree or is the former queen a liar? She is a dirty little liar. Mm. Hate to hear it. Wins are not a quarterback stat. Quarterbacks may have more of a play on wins than any other position, mm -hmm. but they're not a quarterback stat. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. I mean, I don't know how many more people need to hear it, but they are. There's actually, I do know a shit ton of people. Yeah, it's a lot it. of people. There's <laughs> so many. Yeah. Even in the NFL, they're like, we want winners. It's like, well, mm -hmm. yeah, try building a AJ good team. McCarron, AJ McCarron won a lot of games. I don't think he's doing a whole lot in the NFL. I'm just saying. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a very, that's one of those arguments that does not last more than two or three tweets. Yeah. Um, it falls apart pretty quickly because people, they change the goalpost almost immediately after you counter with some version of what you just said. Yep. It, it's, it's the only one that I don't like, I'll argue stuff until I'm bored because I have nothing better to do most days. Mm -hmm. But like, if I get the quarterback, like he doesn't win tweet. I'm like, all right, I'm not, I'm barely, <laughs> I'm just like, you're wrong. You don't know how football works. And yeah. Like, so how do you like to compare quarterbacks to stat statistics, anything in particular, anything in particular that you like to use? I really like to look at like uh, their EPA per play, um, mm. their efficiency, uh, yeah. completion percentage over expected. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also like to compare how they perform to how well their offensive line performed. Um, nice. Because I think like if you have a team like I'll use Justin Fields as an example because I'm a Bears fan. Mm -hmm. um, Offensive line was one of the worst pass blocking units I've ever seen. Yeah, um, they were really good, really good run blockers, um, mm -hmm. but bad pass blockers. He really didn't have wide receivers to throw to most of the year. So I'm not mm -hmm. shocked that he had a bad year as a, as a passer. Someone like Derek Carr, you know, the mm -hmm. offense is a little bit better. He's got Devonte Adams, Darren Waller, mm -hmm. Josh Jacobs, more pieces there. I expect him to be a little bit more of a passer. So when he mm -hmm. isn't, you know, that's a little bit more shocking to me than when a team like, you know, Chicago doesn't have a great passing attack. Sure. And that's, completely understandable so that will actually that's very nice because we'll touch on a little bit on that later you drop some stuff some little breadcrumbs that i've got in one of these questions coming up so we'll expand on that um all right for our next one uh so some athletes have that dog in them but you actually have several dogs out of you how did you become such a big dog guy uh it's really i can thank my wife for uh for that you know mm -hmm. we um, I've always loved dogs, but I never had dogs growing up. Um, my dad was just not a pet guy in general, mm -hmm. so we didn't really have too many pets. Mm -hmm. um, but then started dating her. Um, she always had pets growing up, specifically dogs. Um, mm -hmm. And so we knew when when we got together, uh, once we finally got our own place, weren't like living at a parent's house or college campuses or anything like that, or in, mm -hmm. and finally got to an apartment where we could, we got one dog. And then we got two dogs. Mm -hmm. um, and then she actually uh, is the vice president of a dog rescue as well. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, yeah. So wow. um, we got two of our dogs through that. And then we always mm -hmm. have like rotating foster dogs as well through it. Mm -hmm. So oh, I really, I, I would probably have like two dogs if it weren't for my wife. Mm -hmm. um, but because of her, we just we go <laughs> wild. Yeah. That's just kind of not to be corny, but that is literally the nature of the beast. When exactly. That's what she has going on. Uh, that's great. I've got, um, I'm a big dog guy myself. I only have one at the moment, but I'm trying to wear my wife down slowly over time. That's, that's how it always goes with me with foster dogs. We like, we get a foster adopted and then I'm like, no more. And then she's like, but look at it. And I'm like, <laughs> it's beautiful, but no. And it's like, but look at it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, all right, fine. Yeah, dog. fine. I mean, and it works. I get it. You got to kind of classics are classics for a reason. Exactly. <laughs> Nice. All right. Well, that is good to hear. And it takes a huge heart to do that kind of stuff. So kudos to both of you for that. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. So this next question is we're going to hit trivia corner real quick. 
So I'm going to hit you with a little trivia question. And I think you're probably going to know it, which I don't typically do, but I just like the question enough that I had to ask it. So three men hold the, actually, I'll take that back. Let me rephrase this a little better. Who are the three Chicago bears quarterbacks that hold the record for single season passing records? So there's one guy at the top and there's a couple guy a few times. And then there's one more guy at the bottom. Ooh, this one's mm-hmm. actually you know, stumped me a little bit. Jay Cutler's got to be in the list. He is number two. Uh, he's uh, he's actually two through five. Two through five. Mm-hmm. Shout out, uh, Jay. Who's quarterback one? And then there's one above him, and then there's one beneath him. Jim McMahon. No, no McMahon. No, 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 no. Rex Grossman? Mm, close. Rex Grossman was after the third guy. I know. This one gentleman had 3,200 yards, and then another gentleman at the top had 3,800 yards. Oh man, our yeah, I know. suck. I One of them was surprising to me. The other, I honestly never even heard of. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna get the Sid so Luckman. I don't know. Oh uh, no, actually, Sid's not too far down there. So I'll give you the last guy, and then I'll give you one more second to see if you can get the third one. Mitch Trubisky is number three with three thousand two hundred and twenty-three yards. It's a little embarrassing. In two thousand eighteen. Ugh. Yeah, that's rough. And then you had a little Cutler in 2010, 2015, 09, and 14. And then one gentleman in 1995 threw for 3,800 yards. 95 mm-hmm. it was the year I was born. So mm-hmm. I have 29 to just, touchdowns. Like, Cordell Stewart. Mm. Eric remember. Kramer. Oh, I'm an idiot. Eric I met him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could tell. I can see the, the wires working in your brain. Damn it. Uh, this is why I'm rooting for Justin Fields so badly is because this list was really hard to look at. And I know you know that that's not yeah. information. It's a tough scene out here being a Chicago, uh, Chicago bears fan. Uh, you're going to make it though. I, I'm Justin Fields, man. He is a, he is a tea, a tea, a tea kettle for some people. They just sound off and it's really hard to watch. I've had to stop talking about Justin Fields <laughs> for the past like month. I just can't mm-hmm. do it anymore. I'm burnt out. Mm-hmm. I get it. Well, um, that's going to be unfortunate for one of the next questions I have coming up. And, and <laughs> so. I, I'll talk about it, just not on Twitter. Twitter, sure. it's off the uh, it's off the board. Okay. Well, while that's fair, that's fair enough. We'll have some some positivity and some flow with this one right here. There so let's go. just jump into it, actually. So are the expectations for Justin Fields going into twenty twenty three appropriately set? I think as a whole they are. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's enough people on both sides of the argument that it really kind of ends up like a perfectly rated, underrated, overrated situation. I think it sure. ends up just falling kind of right in the middle. Yeah. Um, I think we're, I think he's going to take a step forward as a passer. They've shown mm-hmm. that they want to invest in the offensive line, bringing mm-hmm. in DJ Moore. They trust him as a quarterback. So I think that, you know, passing can only get better. Um, I don't expect him to contend for the rushing title every single mm-hmm. year, like the all time rushing title. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, I think overall, um, he's going to, he's going to improve. We're going to see a jump from Justin Fields this year. And I think the mm-hmm. market generally would agree with you. It's hard yeah. to be as bad as it was last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, just general improvement, you know, from week five on, he was a really good quarterback. Yeah. Um, so I, I think we just continue to see him improve here. Um, but I think the market is generally pretty fair on him right now. He's, he's like a top 10 quarterback in a lot of people's fantasy yeah. rankings, at least. Um, mm-hmm. so fantasy wise, I think he's, you know, right where we expect yeah. real football. Who knows? I think there's, you know, a lot of people stand on one side of the spectrum. They're either he's the greatest quarterback in the league or he sucks. Um, and I think that just kind of naturally makes him fall right in the middle. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice balance. And the context of the conversation is very important, right? For fantasy wise, he's got some pretty good juice to him. And for NFL wise, I think anybody speaking rationally has a very hopeful but cautious approach to yeah. the season, especially with, you know, how much flux. And how many different ways they can build the team, you know, going into the year. There's a lot of um, a lot of paths they can take. Exactly. There's so mm-hmm. much. It, like I said, it's just hard to be as bad as it was last year. And yeah. even last year, he was a really good fantasy quarterback. So mm-hmm. high hopes for him this year. Yeah, he had the he had. I think he had the highest ratio of unbelievable plays to wins I've ever seen anybody ever have. It's it's got to be up there. I don't <laughs> yeah, I can't like think of the rule of cool comes into play with him so many times where you're just yeah. like that. That should count as the win. He yeah. just took he ran, he was a quarterback who was breaking off 60 80 yard touchdowns seemingly weekly for a stretch. So, yeah. And that's, you know, we I mean, I I'm 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 fingers crossed big time for them for you guys. So, let's let's put some good energy that way. I'm ready. Yeah. All right, number 13. What is your ideal 
league setup from size to roster to scoring for fantasy. Yeah. So I'm a, a very much of a 12 team guy, uh, mm-hmm. super flex, full PPR. Nice. Um, I like tight end premium. It's not mm-hmm. a deal breaker for me though. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see what else do I, how does tight end premium affect how you draft? If we're just talking redraft, it doesn't. Mm-hmm. Um, I still take the guys that I like when I want to take them. Yeah. Um, but I, I feel like I get better value on the other positions because people will reach for tight ends. So oh, that's actually nice. why I like So you play, it. you play the market basically. Exactly. Like yeah. it'll be round five and there's, you know, the top, the top 10 tight ends are gone. It's like half mm-hmm. of those guys aren't going to score any points yeah. like, outside of like four weeks of the season. Anyway, yeah. I'll throw, you know, last, last year going into week four, I think like Will Disley was tight end. Mm-hmm. is three like yeah. i'll figure it out but yeah. you just gave me a guy that i like a lot more 10 sure. picks later so yeah. i'll sign up for that any day of the week yeah there's a lot of uh like gerald everett's going to around earlier than they yeah. normally would uh in tight end premium but uh i mean i think you're right i think there's a misunderstanding of what that tight end maybe three through eight actually does in comparison yeah. to what you like you said about how you can capitalize on the other positions yeah i've mm-hmm. the to see players like really jump in value, you have to have like two extra points per reception for the tight ends. Mm-hmm. So like really mm-hmm. see an impact. If you like, just look at the entire yeah. league scoring, like yeah. half the tight ends, like the, the top six tight ends in football barely catch 50 balls. Yeah. Like is the it's... extra 25 points really making a difference on your season? No, no. The, the fed hasn't raised the rates that exactly. much yet. And once they do, we can all have that conversation, but it ain't happening yet. Yeah. It is not yeah. there. So, <laughs> Nice. So 12 man, super flex, full PPR, any, um, anything else in, like that to that? I like, uh, personally two running mm-hmm. back, two wide receiver, tight mm-hmm. end, three flex, um, Nice, three flex. Your, there you go. And then your super flex. So yeah. I'm a wide receiver guy. So I like, uh, like drafting mm-hmm. an extra wide receiver here and there. Nice. Um, and I definitely, uh, I prefer six point passing touchdowns. I feel like mm-hmm. it balances quarterback value a little bit with the runners. Yeah. Um, but I also like to make the running backs a little bit more valuable by giving mm-hmm. them like a extra like quarter point per first down. Yeah. So you're, you're essentially trying to maximize how each position is used. Yeah. I want, I want like consistency through the position where I don't have mm-hmm. to think of like, Oh, I need to draft a second running back because yeah. I've got six wide receivers already. It's like, I want the guy who's going to score the most points. And if I can mm-hmm. figure out a way to get him into my lineup, I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. Sure. So do your drafts, we all like to diversify, you know, that's like the name of the game, but do your drafts take any kind of similar mold when you draft that way? Um, yes and no. Um, mm-hmm. there, there's some guys that I definitely like frequently roster just because I notice them as a value, like mm-hmm. Deontay Johnson, this year, like going into this year, people are even lower on him than I expected. Um, mm-hmm. so he's been like a consistent guy, at least in best ball for me. Yeah. Um, but I really try and just respond to whatever the league does. Like if you're going to go, yeah, if, yeah eight wide receivers go in the first round and I'm picking ninth, I'm probably taking, you know, Brees, JT, Bijan, mm-hmm. uh, CMC. Like I'm not afraid to roster a bunch of running backs. If that's what the league's going to hand to me, yeah. I've had teams where I've got five top five running backs, like, mm-hmm. you know, on paper anyway. Um, yeah. so I, I don't think they consistently take any specific mold. Um, mm-hmm. I do like to try and snag two elite quarterbacks, um, sure. if at all possible. Um, and I'll fade tight end until, I'll find like the last <laughs> yeah. rosterable tight end. To, I'll, I'm, I'm waiting for Chig to come off the board. Sure. I'm waiting for Noah Fant in round 15 mm-hmm. and I'll plug yeah. him in and just figure it out from there. So besides fading tight end, yeah. not, not too crazy consistent. Yeah. No, it's, it's, de- that's definitely manageable. I've gotten in a very bad habit of if I'm picking after six, maybe even after seven of just, I just can't pass up the best skill position player available, whether it's McCaffrey or Justin Jefferson. I just, I haven't, I had, this is the way my drafts have been smoking me. I've been picking seven through 12 in almost all of my underdogs. Yeah, Um, I'll get to the top one day. I'm so shocked because I feel like all of us, everybody that I talk to, we're just all picking eighth every time. How many drafts are going on that we're all picking eighth every time? I don't know. There's there's gotta be some behind the scenes chicanery or something happening. Um, I I definitely, I dream of picking in that top five one day. I got, I I think all year I've gotten one top three pick. Mm -hmm. I know it's like, it's like being, it's like winning the lottery almost. Like just the odds are so insurmountable. I don't know. Maybe, maybe underdog can hook us up if they're out there. I mean, uh, hey, use code JWB uh, Smash it. To, to sign up. You get a 100% deposit bonus. So if there's more of you in there, mm-hmm. it's less likely that I'm picking eighth. That's just basic math. 
Yeah. Basic probability. So mm -hmm. sign help, me up. Help us out, please. We're trying to make some kids' wishes come true. Exactly. And <laughs> me, I'm the kid. Help me. Yes. Help my wishes come true. <laughs> All right. This next one is going to be a complete change of pace. What are your thoughts on the Mexican drug cartels? I mean, they probably need to chill out a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I Go don't want to like it used to be. Yeah. Like you do what you got to do, but like maybe don't cut off somebody's finger or like, mm -hmm. you know, take their family out if they, yeah. you know, upset you. Mm -hmm. I, there, I feel like there's at least just slightly classier ways to handle this. I know. I miss the old days. It just felt, it feels so barbaric now. And I felt like they used to handle their business a little bit more under the table or a little more covert. And uh, now I'm kind of terrified of them. Yeah. I mean, you see it on TikTok. Like I'll be scrolling TikTok every once in a while. It's like, I'm on yeah. cartel talk. I don't know how I got here, but yeah. I've seen a lot of things I don't want to see. No, I know what you mean. I watched like one video of like cartel setting a car on fire in, on scrolling through my Twitter feed for like five seconds. And I'm like, Oof, I don't want to see that again. And then immediately my feed is inundated with just like drive by cartel shootings and fires and stuff. I'm like, yep. oh shit. <laughs> American kidnapped by cartel in yeah. Cancun. And I'm like, all right, definitely not going there now. That's a wrap. No, that's a wrap on Cancun and um, Tulum and all those places that are just yep. um, just doing what they do, I guess. I'll go to Costa Rica instead. It seems calmer there. There are better places. Costa Rica, Dominican Republic. Get on out there. Explore. Bahamas. Whatever it takes. A little exactly. Safe, a little chiller. I've only been out of the country <laughs> one time, so I really don't have like the the best advice on that. So did you work? Did you go to Costa Rica? I went to Canada. Hey, that counts. So, so you haven't been anywhere tropical? Not yet. Uh, my wife and I were supposed to go for our uh, honeymoon, but it was like mm -hmm. peak COVID. Yeah. Really couldn't. And so, you know, everything was in flux. Sure. So we decided not to do it. So we're going to go in 2025 for nice. our five year wedding anniversary. Oh, that'll be sweet. That'll be sweet. So, when did you get married? Uh, September 2020. Nice. There you go. It was August 2020. So yeah. let's go. Let's there we go. go. <laughs> yeah. And we Good postponed, postponed our honeymoon for yeah. a long time. We did like a weekend trip up to Galena, Illinois, which is like mm -hmm. a really famous for us anyway, like old yeah. town. They've got a bunch of wineries and stuff up there. Oh, nice. Um, so we just basically went and drank wine for a weekend and that was our honeymoon. Oh, there you go. That the weekend after you got married. Yep. Just peak NFL season starting. Yeah, I didn't. Um, <laughs> I didn't miss any NFL games. I was in like yeah. a fantasy baseball championship at the time, though. So mm. I was checking the phone probably a yeah. little bit more than I should have been for that. But yeah, I know. We got the, <laughs> we we got the dub, game. So that's what matters. Hell yeah. There you go. That's like a honeymoon present, basically. It paid for the trip. <laughs> that's what you want to hear. Hell yeah. Oh, God. All right. I like this next one. So let's say that the government mandates a vaccine that allow that only allows you to draft players from 31 of the 32 NFL teams. So which NFL team would you sacrifice to the pandemic gods that you will not be allowed to draft any of their players from? Houston Texans. I'm sorry, mm. but I'm not mm. sorry. Goodbye. Yeah. I don't know how you could be sorry. Yeah. I'm did not missing see, out like, on much. Did you see like the cryptic message they put out today? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> did the Texans just break up with me? I know. They used like early 2000s Evanescence stained Creed font, like rock yeah. album. Oh, God. it was. So it's like the Denny Carter, like wide receiver tweet, but it was the <laughs> organization. Walk slowly with the knife. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, they're. Um, yeah, I don't know what they could do. And you know what? As we've said that now, that means that they're going to draft somebody like JSN or something like that. Yep. Just smash all of our hopes and dreams they're gonna go like stroud jsn to start it off and i'm mm -hmm. gonna be like well there goes my two favorite prospects <laughs> yeah i honestly i've thought about this question a lot because i always like to come up with like uh who are the teams i least likely want to draft any players from coming up and uh, i mean there's a few of them i'm not keen on patriots um i love yep. i love raw don't get me wrong and i mean for like you said earlier for the right cost sure but i also don't trust what they're doing for a second um yeah and I've learned, I've been burned on that over the years. There's a few of them out there, but there's definitely some leading candidates. Yeah. I don't, I won't walk into a draft fading a team completely, but it's yeah. like also if there's a really good player or it's like, mm -hmm. do I want to pick this guy or Juju now for yeah. the Patriots? It's like, I'm, I'm probably going to go the other guy. Yeah. No, I'm right there with you. Exactly. And that's not what I want to imply is that I'm like crossing crossing guys off pre, but, um, if I have the option between yeah. those two, I'm, there are teams that I like to tend to avoid and it saves me, uh, saves me some headache throughout the year. Exactly. There's nothing wrong with just like fading a legitimately bad 
offense, but you yeah. don't just like, you can't be one of those people who are like, I'm not drafting any jets because the jets will jets. It's yeah. like they just, they just <laughs> traded for Aaron Rodgers like an hour and a half ago. Like they're that, fine. Yeah. That'll cost you some Garrett Wilson breaking out. If you come in with uh come in with that kind of mindset. Exactly. Mm-hmm. All right. What do we got here next? So walk me through your football Sunday routine. Uh, pretty much wake up immediately. Start tinkering, mm-hmm. start getting those yep. lineups all set early. Make my, make, exa- early. I'm waking <laughs> up. I also like, I can't sleep in anymore to save my life mm. unless I was really drunk the night before. Sure. How old um, are you? I'm 27. Nice. About to be 28 next yeah. month. So. You're crossing the threshold pretty. Yeah. yeah. I'm getting there. So I'm up <laughs> at like seven 30, eight o'clock every morning, pretty much mm. no matter what. Uh, so I'm up, I'm tinkering. Then I like yeah. to make a little breakfast, take the dogs mm-hmm. for a walk, get a little workout in. Yeah. And then I plop my happy ass right here at this computer. I put a game on this monitor, a game on that monitor and a game on the TV. Nice. And uh, I'm watching football for the rest of the day. The wife, you know, respects Sundays are football time. That's I don't get asked kind. to do anything on Sundays. Yeah. We get anything else we need to get done on Saturday. And I just nice. have Sundays to just watch, watch football all day. She'll see me between games. She'll mm-hmm. see me when I need to go get a refill. Yeah. Uh, right. I need to cook, you know, cook up some lunch or something, but yeah, that is the, that is so key. What you said is about m- committing your Saturday to what needs to get done and not selfishly doubling down yep. on, you know, Hey, let's do what something, let's do something I kind of want to do on Saturday. And then also I'm going to do something all Sunday too. Yeah. I'm not going to take her to top golf on a Saturday because I want to go to top golf. Like we'll go, we'll go to, we'll go shopping. We'll go to Ulta. Yeah. We'll go to her favorite lunch spot, you know, we'll hang out home, hang out Ulta. with the dogs. That's good. I'd like to know how many podcasts have Ulta floating around the, the conversation, but I'm right there. I know exactly what you mean. It's so In our space, probably not a ton, but also <laughs> maybe secretly a ton. Um, it, it wouldn't shock me. Um, I bet a lot of us spend our, our Saturdays at Ulta without realizing it or Sephora we have yes. a bit of Kohl's or a TJ Maxx in there too. Nowhere um, that ever has somewhere good to sit down. That's sure. Exactly. That's, that's always my, my big gripe with it. And then it's like, I can't, I'm, I'm looking at stuff and I just don't know what I'm looking at. Yeah. I don't care. My wife says, Hey, your face looks dry. Here's some moisturizer. I say, thanks babe. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's the extent of what I know. So, yeah. And that's all the, that's the extent of all you should know. Yeah. If that's she can it. get it, if she can get it for me. I'll mm. use it. That's all. <laughs> Don't make me do the shopping for it though. Yeah. She's your time is what you're committing. Exactly. And that's what matters to them. They like the effort. For yeah. sure. All right. Excellent. Uh, what team or teams will you be monitoring the most as we roll through training camp post draft? Um, I think I have to say the Ravens just because we still mm-hmm. don't know what's going on with Lamar mm-hmm. um, with the new offensive coordinator there too. I think they pass a little bit more sure. um, as a bears fan. I have to say the bears uh, mm-hmm. just because, you know, yeah, it, it's, sure. it's instinct at that point. Um, mm-hmm. And then I really, you know, I'm really open after that. I don't have too many teams that I'm going to like too heavily focus on. Yeah. Um, but you know, there's a lot of teams have really interesting situations that they've found mm-hmm. themselves in. Like the Falcons have built a really good team, still maybe sure. don't have a quarterback. Can Russ bounce back? Mm-hmm. Uh, is Austin Eckler still going to be a Charger in two weeks? Yeah. I don't know. So, you know, there's a lot of cool stories to watch. So I'm just going to, it's going to be a very broad net that I'm casting. Sure. So what are you more interested in? Lamar on the Ravens or Ravens without Lamar? I'm more interested in... It's pretty close. I want to see Lamar go elsewhere just for him. Mm -hmm. But I also think that the Ravens are probably the best fantasy outcome for him. Um, So selfishly, because I have a lot of Lamar shares, Mm -hmm. I do want him on the Ravens. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. Um, He just has, he's going to take his, he can take his business elsewhere and we can, uh, we can have faith in his product. What they're trying to do, you know, that doesn't always clash. And look, I'm, I'm, I had the unfortunate pleasure of watching Todd Munkin, um, you know, call plays or try to call plays for the Bucks, And I mean, it, it was not, there's been some pretty revisionist history on his ability to be an NFL uh, play caller. So right. I'm, I'm a little iffy uh, on what he's bringing to the table, but yeah. I think it's more for me. It's just hard to be worse than a 1940s NFL offense. You are not wrong. <laughs> you are not wrong. It, it's really hard unless you're Matt Nagy, in which case it's second nature to you. So, yeah. And he's, you know, with him, especially him on the Ravens, it comes with a built-in expectations. I mean, we all knew what he's been and he was still mm-hmm. going, you know, what he, he was going top six last year. And a lot of people weren't afraid to take him top three. Yep. So 
Yeah. And that, you know, that, that would probably not change uh, on any team. Yeah. As soon as we, as soon as we know Lamar's playing football, uh, he's, mm-hmm. his ADP is going to be right back there this year. Yeah, absolutely. Are you, so the news did just break about Aaron Rodgers. Um, if all things go smoothly, where do you see him fitting in as far as drafting quarterback ranking, anything like that? Um, I think he still probably falls in. I, somebody will take him in the, uh, as a top 12 quarterback, mm-hmm. um, in redraft, especially, I think he'll fall, you know, probably around that round nine or 10 ADP range for, sure. for a lot of leagues. Um, I think it's his best situation that he's been in, in a couple of years, mm-hmm. um, in terms of just the team built around him. It's just, they have a solid offensive line, really good receivers, which he hasn't really had outside of Devonte Adams mm-hmm. in a while. You know, Brees is healthy; everything looks good there. Uh, the tight end room is nice, so I think he mm-hmm. can still be a productive quarterback. Um, I'm not going to probably have a lot of him. Um, yeah. I like to just have even in one quarterback redraft. I, I like to have a, an elite quarterback on my rosters. Um, mm-hmm. So I'll just of the top six, which everyone falls the farthest, I'll take. Yeah, um, that's but, exactly how I approach it. As well. Yeah, yeah. It's, so last year I had a ton of Jalen Hurts just because he was the mm-hmm. sixth. He was the one who was you know falling to the ninth round as the yeah. as a top quarterback option for me. I had him at quarterback mm-hmm. three coming into the year, so yeah. it was a no brainer there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I still think he'll go as a top twelve quarterback. Um, but I I think by like week four or five he'll probably be, you know, trade yeah. bait for somebody or or you know uh, a nice streamer. Sure, I'll, I'll be interested to see how many people are able to take out to their ugh, Aaron Rodgers from their heart and their minds yep. going into the year, because it's been such a gagging narrative for so long. Um, Cause you're right. I mean, I think a lot of people are going to point to last year and they're going to say that it all had all that, that happened with them was because of him. When, when you mm-hmm. really look at the situation that he was in and the past catchers that he had, it was pretty abysmal. Yeah. So um, I'm really, I am excited for what he can do, but there's a ceiling on that. Agreed. Yeah. And Wyatt from JWB, um, he predicted it perfectly last year. He said, I don't think Aaron Rodgers is going to be anything more than a streaming option this year. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was exactly because of that, just because the team around him wasn't as good as it had been. Um, And he ended up being a hundred percent right on that. Um, But I think, you know, at what expected cost is for me, you know, maybe I'll dabble, but also let somebody uh, jump on the landmine if they want to reach a little bit. Of course, you're not going to stick your neck out for it. Exactly. Yeah. Excellent. Well, that brings us to our very last question. And what I like to do at the end of the show is I like to give the guest 30 seconds and act as if you had cameras that could speak to every fantasy football player for the upcoming year. So I'm going to put 30 seconds on the clock. All right. If you could say one thing to everybody else, uh, this is what it would be. So I'll go in three, two, one, boom. Hi everyone. If I could get you to do one thing for this upcoming fantasy season, it's stop overpaying for mid assets. I don't care how much you love Kenny Pickett or Jordan Love or, you know, George Pickens. That one's a hot take. Um, (laughs) But Gabe Davis's every year, you're not going to get it right. You're just not. And if you do, you got it wrong somewhere else. So stop overpaying for mid, get some elite assets, condense your mid assets into elite assets as much as possible, and you'll have a good year. Boom, 30 seconds on the damn dot. So minimize your mid. I like it. That yeah, should exactly. be on a, that should be on a koozie or something. I'm gonna make you know Jada. Hey, Wyatt, if you're in, <laughs> if you're uh, if you're watching this, get the merch going. Let's go. Let's slap that on something because that rolls off the tongue and it's hella true. If you do it, you will have a better year. I do it every year. I have mm-hmm. good years. Yeah. That's the way to do it. <laughs> I like it a lot. Well, Jake, that was absolutely fantastic, man. I appreciate you coming on. I want to give you a few more seconds here. If there's any up, anything you have coming up that you want to plug or what you have going on, once again, where people can find you. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on. It's always fun to uh, be able to hop on and uh, shoot the shit with somebody. Um, so I appreciate that. All my content is coming through with uh, JWB. So every Thursday you can find, uh, we, my, my friend Timmy and I, we analyze uh, Keep Trade Cut. We look at you know ways to exploit edges there, uh, whether through it's buying or selling players. Um, we have uh, I'm going to be live streaming uh, during the NFL draft. So myself and my co-host from Two Average Husbands, um, if anybody wants to you know hop in the chat in there or even hop on camera with us, we'll be live for the entire first round. Uh, with people jumping in and out for that. And then Two Average Husbands, we're on all streaming platforms. So make sure you guys check us out. We're just two idiots who like to drink beer and and, and talk shit. So it's a good time. So That's fantastic. That is, um, for the demographic of this show, those are absolute home runs. Uh, So yeah, I encourage everybody to go check out everything you guys have going on over there. It's some of the best work in the industry right now. So We appreciate that for sure. Thank you. Of course. Once again, I appreciate you coming on and uh, have fun with the draft this weekend. Oh, I will. All right, take it easy, brother.
You too. See ya. All right, everybody. That is an absolute wrap. I just want to throw some more uh, information pieces out there. You can catch me on the TSS Dynasty Hour uh, going live every Thursday at 9 o'clock. If you got some time to kill, come check uh, check us out over there. We're going to be shooting some shit and having some fun. Uh, yeah, actually, that's it. So uh, enjoy yourself and have a good draft. See ya.